Having trouble passing in Madden 24? No! Whether you're throwing too many picks? No! Taking way too many sacks? Help me! Help me! Or if you can't connect on deep throws? You suck! This is the video for you. So if you want to find out how to get results like this? Break yourself, fool! Thank you! Windows tinted on my ride when I drive in it. Stick around after the intro. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. If you played Madden 24 already, you might have realized that the passing feels very different. The defenses are playing way better in coverage, and the pass rush tends to get pressure before a lot of routes even get open. While this does give the game way more balance, it also makes it way harder to throw the ball consistently, especially downfield. So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys everything you need to know to become a better passer at Madden NFL 24. But before I do, if you guys want to take your game to the next level, I invite you to hit the subscribe button, as I'll be putting out many tip videos like this all year long. My first tip is in the settings menu. If you haven't played Madden in a few years or are playing for the first time on a next-gen console, you might have noticed that the game makes you choose which passing type you would like to use before you even play the game. So my first tip is to find out which of these passing types is best to use in Madden 24. In Madden 23, when the new passing system was introduced, placement and accuracy was the clear favorite as it gave you total control over where you wanted to place the pass on every single play, while classic passing only allows you to lead it in a certain direction. This year, the freeform passing reticle feels noticeably less effective and less accurate as it might be the reason passing feels harder. So while I still think it's best to learn the new system over classic passing since you have more control over where the ball goes, I think this year it's better to use the freeform reticle less while in this mode as it definitely makes the pass less accurate. I'll show you what I'm talking about on this next play. I'm going to use a play from my new Madden 24 Saints offensive ebook, link in the description and top in comment if you guys want to check that out. The play is the Z spot out of the gun stack Y flex and I'm going to run it against cover 3 zone. The reason I'm choosing this combination is because I'm going to focus on the corner route which is not supposed to get open against a defense like this. I'm going to throw the ball 10 times, once while using classic passing and the other while using play placement and accuracy to show which one is more accurate. I started off with placement and accuracy and I barely completed my first pass before throwing an interception or an incompletion on my next five throws before getting into a rhythm and completing my last three in a row, giving me a total of four out of ten complete. When I switched over to classic passing, the first thing I noticed was that I was getting much more consistent results as the receiver was getting open outside of the coverage pretty much the same way every single time, despite the ball being slightly overthrown. I also noticed that I was catching the passes in traffic much better through contact. The final tally was too close to call, but I completed 5 out of 10, which was slightly better, so I wanted to run the experiment one more time to see if the results would be any more clear. I completed the same 5 out of 10 in classic mode while only completing 3 out of 10 from placement and accuracy. So to me the results are clear that classic mode is more accurate for short and intermediate pass plays. So if you think that means classic one, the real difference comes from deep passing. And this is why I ultimately think that placement and accuracy is better. I did the same test with the same play, only this time I set up as a one play touchdown against cover three. I chose this play once again due to the difficulty of the throw and how tight the coverage is, and the results were the exact opposite. As I scored on four out of ten with placement and accuracy, while I couldn't connect one time with classic passing going over for 10, as it was clear that you need the freeform reticle to go outside of the target circle so that you can lead the receiver out of the area where the cornerback can make a play. This is probably part of the reason that deep passing is hard to do this year, as leading too far makes it out of the receiver's range as well, but an incomplete pass is still better than an interception. So while I'm going to stick with placement and accuracy, ask yourself what type of player you want to be before making your selection. If you want an explosive one-play touchdown type of offense, you're going to want placement and accuracy, but if you want to complete short and intermediate throws in between run plays, classic might be the better choice for you because it is more accurate. The next tip are going to be about blocking. There are adjustments you can make, but the first thing I want to go over is quarterback movement and pocket presence. When the play starts, you always have to be aware of the lineman's leverage on any given play to prolong the protection. It's just like when you run the football as you have to move the ball carrier in a way that keeps the blockers between you and the defenders. If we look at Jason Kelsey's block here, you can see that the defender has no leverage to get past him on either side. As I'm sitting safely behind him, parallel between me, my quarterback, and the defender. The same thing can be said about everyone here except for Landon Dickerson's block number 69 as the defender is already has him turned, showing clear leverage to get past him unless I move to reestablish the pocket. So I'm going to sidestep to the right to try to get 69 between me and the rusher once again. And you can see as I do this, 
59 pushes him backwards instead because I have control over how well my linemen block based on where I stand in the pocket. Eventually you can't do this for all five guys as the angles become almost impossible, but this is the best way to get your protection to hold up as long as it can. There are some helpful things that you can do in pass bro through pre-snap adjustments and the best trick to me is double teaming. If you have a dominant defensive lineman, you can always just double team him by hitting the LB or L1 button whether an Xbox or Playstation, then down the right stick. Then choose which lineman you want to double team. This will make sure the closest two blockers will block him on both sides, making it even harder for him to get outside leverage needed to pass on either side of the offensive line. You can also use this method by blocking the tight end and motioning him into the line of scrimmage. If you double team the end now, it will make it easy to roll to that side for guaranteed pass protection, or you can even take off in that direction if you have a fast quarterback. You can also put the running back on a pass block pre-snap, or if he's in a play action animation, all you have to do to cancel that and turn his attention to blocking is hitting the right trigger or the R2 button after the snap, and he will go right to pass pro. Now that we have protection down, the next thing to do is make sure that you set your feet before passing. If you throw while moving in any direction, the pass has a better chance of being errant and not going where you want it to go. So whenever you are moving and want to throw, make sure to take the time to stop by letting go of the right stick so that your quarterback can naturally set his feet before throwing. While throwing, you should also be pass leading on every single play as this will also help to get receivers open that would otherwise be covered. The pass lead button is the same button that controls the quarterback's movement. Once you press a button of a receiver, it will control the pass lead instead. Just make sure that you always lead away from the nearest defender. After this, there are several pass and catch modifiers that you can use to raise your chances of success on a play. The first being the different types of passes you can throw. The most common is probably the bullet pass. This is something you'll probably do 90% of the time as it will get the ball to the target as quickly as possible, reducing the ball's time in the air, which in turn lessens the amount of time your defender has to react to it. To bullet pass, all you have to do is hold the receiver icon down. The longer, the better. This type of pass is used all over the field to all areas, but the lob pass really only has use in one. To lob pass, instead of holding down the icon, you simply tap it for a split second, and this will make the quarterback float the ball in the air as long as possible, making this only useful when throwing to space, meaning when there is no defender over the top in coverage. Think cover zero, or cover one as long as there isn't a safety over the top. You can also hold the RBR1 button to perform a high throw, but this function has been noticeably nerfed in effectiveness after it dominated the game last year, making it much riskier this year being either incomplete or even picked off. After the throw, there are also several catch modifiers that can improve the chance of a completion as well, like a safe catch. If you throw the ball into an area with a lot of defenders, they have the ability to hit you and force a knockout. But if you hit the A or X button with your Xbox or PlayStation once again to safe catch, it will make the defender shield the ball with his body and go down to the ground to protect against any knockout attempts. Doing this near the sideline will also guarantee a toe tap animation that will be in bounds more often than not. Aggressive catching is another function that was nerfed after it dominated last year's gameplay, but you can still try to go up and snatch the ball out of the air by hitting the wire triangle button. The last catch modifier is rack catching, which is only effective if your receiver has a lot of space from the other defenders. Hitting the X or square button, whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation once again, will make your receiver accelerate through the catch for a catch and run. But if he gets hit while doing this, a knockout is all but guaranteed. And then last but not least, you have a couple of post snap functions that can get you out of a jam if a play breaks down. Playmakering and throwing the ball away. If you want the playmaker, just use the right stick in whatever direction you want to control the nearest receiver, and they will abandon the current route that they are running to go in whatever direction you input. If this doesn't get anyone open, the last thing you can do is throw the ball safely out of bounds by pushing in the right stick. You just have to make sure to try to get outside of the tackle box before doing so, so that you avoid getting an intentional grounding penalty. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more tips about Madden 24, I have another video that I recently made on coaching adjustments popping up. So just click the links as I'm sure to help with your game. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.